Thank you very much, Beverly. Um, just on a personal side note, as I was growing up as an urban kid in the city, I didn't really know very much about my culture or anything, and uh, Beverly's book, uh, whenever I would read it, it would kind of connect me to my people, and uh, it has a big place in my heart, so thank you very much. And I'm really excited to see your, your film and your venture into new media. Our, our next reading is by Marie Ann Hart Baker. Marie Ann Hart Baker is a member of the Anishinaabek Saskatchewan First Nation, is a storyteller, performance poet, dis disability activist, and senior actor, playwright, organizer for the Nokomis Storytelling Theatre Project. Through her numerous books of poetry, which include Being on the Moon, Coyote Columbus Cafe, Exercises in Lip Pointing, an old Indian trick is to laugh and Coyote Trail. She explores contemporary urban native experience and is playing a leading role in mapping the terrain for the next wave of Canadian fem feminism. Please welcome Marie Ann Hart Baker. Sometimes when I go visit my son, he lives in Wisconsin, and I get a chance to uh, be more in a, well, luckily it's not a rest, but it is Indian territory. And I know I come and say, gee, this, this is kind of nice here for a rest. You know what he said? Oh, no, it's not. So anyways, I'm glad to say that uh, it is a different type of uh, place to be but it is a native community. Uh, so I'm just wondering where to start because my work is, uh, given I live in a city, I tend to be, um, I don't know what you call that, I have an attitude. Now, oh yeah, now that I'm changing my name or I'm in a between stage of calling myself AKA, I'm sort of saying, maybe this is the AKA attitude. You know? <laughs> So let's see, uh, maybe I'll try, because we did talk a little bit about art today when we were um, on our panel, and I, I always have been fascinated with certain kinds of art, uh, particularly, uh, I used to call it, I think, up the nose art. Anyway, it's uh, my, uh, my idea is to bring art uh, and references it to a very familiar level. So this one I call my Toulouse art trick. I don't know if I have to tell you who Toulouse is, but uh, he used to be a guy that hung out at the Moulin Rouge in Paris and used to paint um, the women that did the can-can. I think uh, we have some wonderful uh, pictures of um, those women dancing because of his work. Anyways, in this one, I kind of want him to paint me. <laughs> to lose our trick, let us duel, you and me right here, not outside. Voyez-vous sa exercise bra? Tits jammed, still a weapon. Belly gapes from dressing gown, to lose. Sashes draped over the chair back. Might tie you up if you want. I.E. <coughs> Safety pin closure. Fat sticks out. All my fat is me and may intimidate you. If left out of life, fat is company. 
Forgive me this excess, mon chéri. Enough me. Back to you, Toes. Would you sketch crotched out pantyhose? <laughs> Not a trick question. <laughs> Oeuvre is oeuvre. <laughs> Here, par example, is a pair of black net stockings. Might have kicked can-can. Not too careful in pulling on the legs, though. Me, hey. The suspense that queen size is not too small. <laughs> but did you, Toulouse, only paint mistresses? Stockings of the dancers at the Moulin Rouge were full of runs, n'est-ce pas? Would you devote your best brush strokes to snagged fishnets abandoned by fat ladies, ever? Would you draw a likeness of me dolling up? My concealed weapon will be my fat. <laughs> it's always hard to dress up and think, can I really <laughs> make myself look good? <laughs> But I thought with his help I could. So now I we move along to my unfortunate situation is that I live in a urban place that has gangs and oh lots of other things happening. So I shall now take you there. Tweak. Warriors and posse fight in prison. Native caregiver passenger on bus must remove shank stuck in the back. Sit ass down at just granny gangbang stoic staring window of opportunity. Shut up, that is not a dagger before eyes. Yes, resemblance to machete, butcher knife. Say, soul loss, pain, permits quickie forensic. Mutual evisceration called lateral violence. Nietzsche queen struck in mad cow zone. Got protection for bros and old lady escorts. Flash a lighted camel smoke. Sends message, take care newcomers. Move slow, deliberate. Drunk wrestling gives grandmas a workout. Must patrol in case Police show up stoned. Occupied territory needs respectful address without bed bug bites, clean up crotch areas, bear spray repellent, and face works wonders. Reduces gunshot wounds and details muggings. Historical rapes for young girl vampire lust. Discourse is not bloody forced intercourse. The mind grappled during classroom lecture. Gather all you spiritual buskers and anal projection. Realize face to face fear by avoidance ritual. Now, meaning, if relatives do the killing fault, grab bags of federal funding, why be concerned? All euros are non generous trick or treaty teasers. New Jerusalem mimics Johannesburg slippage. Apart hate, have to cut it out. Has that shank for second generation Main Street creds image. Tweak. I always have to talk tough to go outside in my neighborhood. <laughs> what do you think, though? A gang called Nietzsche Queens. <laughs> nice logo on the back. <laughs> So we've got to take on this gang called the Mad Cows. They're from Africa. <laughs> Can you just see it? Watch out there, or I'm going to milk you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I don't know if uh, I'm on the right path right now. I'm thinking of one and call into the trail here, but I might as well go for it, eh? I had to write a poem, an erotic poem for our group. We have a group called the Aboriginal Writers, and everybody was into this thing, you know, and it was about lust and every other thing, and 
I was feeling kind of embarrassed about it, thinking, oh boy, I'm going to get left out of this thing. Until I came up with my own version of this, it's, um, it's kind of horrible, and I'm not sure they will print it, but I kind of feel it speaks to me. It's called Granny Ear Rot Tick. <laughs> Itchy ear. Cotton swab makes it worse. Tingle sensation. She was total turquoise, not off color comedian or blue. Not a furry chicken lady with a foul tongue was she. She did not attend a residential school run by the Grey Nuns. They had dirty habits that shocked even her mindset. <laughs> She was one to defend the lone stranger, particularly Tonto, not real human homo sapien because Silver got raped constantly. <laughs> PETA, P-E-T-A, people for the erotic treatment of animals said so. <laughs> <laughs> on a Fatkins diet. <laughs> Granny alcoholic addiction, survivor of Granny boot camp. She off the inner nun. She was called Cochon or Sauvage by sleazy sisters. I'll watch, she told them, go back to the Virgin Islands. <laughs> she did not follow behind her man whenever he showed up would not guide him by walking in front and signaling. In a good mood, she would walk beside her partner, but never mind side, back, or front. She would walk all over him. <laughs> Lust for an anthropologist had her powwow on his face. <laughs> There's payback. <laughs> She attended a karate course when she worked as caregiver. The worst part of the job was the old men groping her. She had already been approached by elders when young. She watched TV commercials for Viagra testimonials. Guys learned how to dip dance and perform four plays, really. Her confidence was lucky for her even with gray snatch hairs and a 90-year-old vagina <laughs> would be still sensitive to touch. She would not fear being bald in her private parts because obviously um, grass did not grow on her racetrack that much. <laughs> drama did not disturb her one bit. She did listen just once to a great horny owl that called her name. <laughs> you fat old bitch. <laughs> she was not phased out by that talk. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I had to invent something erotic. <laughs> and uh, it was actually part of this stand-up um, comedy routine I tried to do in Vancouver, but I was kicked out of the comedy group. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> know, I thought of weird stuff, you know, like one of them was, I would reach into my bra and say, and now I'm taking out of the First Nations Women Bank, you know. <laughs> they did not like that. And they're like, oh, do that all the time. <laughs> I guess, let's see, I have maybe one more here, but it, this one was kind of an attempt to um, do that because, again, when you're a um, First Nations writer, you, there's this constant idea about words, like what you're not supposed to say, all that. So one of the, I guess, not so good words, but I kind of found it um, interesting in my writing use it now and then because I heard it so often as a kid. And that was the word squaw. I guess they don't use it so much now, but I remember it was always a, 
a word uh, that was used to describe us. So uh, anyways, here's my one I call Squaw Guide. You audience, me Squaw, <laughs> need to practice those lines. It's not the same as Tarzan Jane address. In the old movies, he yelled as he swung out holding his vine, dropped down to deliver commands to Simba after bossing Cheetah all day. It's not exactly the same either, being called squaw after going to a high school football game, coming home on a bus, this drunk white hose head yells out from the back of the bus, there's a squaw sitting up front. No, not me. Didn't look around. Not me, because I grew semi-invisible. Nobody noticed I was the only invisible Indian going to high school in the city back in the 50s, unless there were lots even I didn't see. I needed the low self-esteem concept to explain why nobody was on my side, why nobody told him I belonged, they were just being good Canadians, nice he was racist and nice I was the squaw. It did make me act up like Jay Silverheels, as I would speak up to joke. What do you mean me, white boy? <laughs> I wasn't tonto or tough enough to defer, say, Kimasabi. You had to be tough, a popular Indian Jack Jacobs, football champion. You say, oh, they can't take a joke. Would a stand-up comedian um, in the North End or West End say that? If Winnipeg born, why not? If Tarzan makes Simba lie down when told and Cheetah screams pointing to his butt, Okay, okay now, no more drudge grudge. I am taking women's studies, and that's tough because I don't have a closet that's empty enough for me to get inside. <laughs> Think about it. Too many skeletons. The closet is full. Haven't counted yet. Them bones, them bones, them shy bones. Like the typical squaw in the old days, I was the shy kind. My best friend used to laugh, holding fingers, fanned out, hiding her whole self. Her big mouth, because it was hard to be a big squaw, big public squaw. I was too invisible to laugh out loud. At the university, I go every day. In my classes, in my classes I transform from textbook squaw who doesn't speak up. I usually do this scary business when not supposed to say anything contentious. Silence is rewarded or reworded. Everyone looks my way to check if I am being quiet each day. I might abuse my feminisms, switch bitch from academic squaw to academic sasquatch. <laughs> So I speak, squaws are past tense, used to be, but nobody says that word much. Hey, but wait a minute, did you gaze at me funny? Intent, just a bit to call me a squaw. Being a squaw is very demanding. In the movies or on a native production set, it is when a woman gets told, Make me some tea, braid my hair, by a warrior, no less. On the rest, the women say, my chief, what my chief says. His speech never mentions my squaws, my papooses. Now, why is that? It's hard to be politically correct, squaw. My secret, don't ever open mouth or let yawn indicate how boring. Better not to say any more about that woman. But say, that drunken squaw is most awesome blend. 
saw some young women doing some reverse squaw baiting. They were sitting in a bus shelter. Whenever a guy would go by, one of them would say, hey, honey, <laughs> and then they would laugh. I should try that stunt. Tan say, honey, get my voice all husky. Buju, honey, at the next power in South Dakota. I would say in a breathy tone, wash day, honey. <laughs> Maybe feminism makes me too shy or to joke around much. The women now talk about outing. Wonder out where? Out in the bush? <laughs> Probably out of my mind. Like I said, my closet is all junk. I'm serious, all that stuff inside is the real me. Anyways, that's my... Uh,